just a couple of sentences, how would you define, what would be your ultimate successful year? Success. Everybody's good health. We know that no matter, Phil, we know. If we had all the money in the world and we didn't have our health, it wouldn't be worth a thing. Be worth a thing. Um, happy clients. Actually, we call them. There's different ones as who have coached us. They, they call them raving clients, right? That's how you try to build. There's actually a, a pyramid style that a, a consultant uses that we want to bring our clients that they're, they're raving about us to everybody. That's success. Um, having work for next year. You can't help but feel good going into our shutdown period and knowing that we have work lined up ahead for us. Um, success can be just thankfulness. All of us, what, what, what makes us tick? What makes us tick within us? What, what drives you, Phil, right? What drives me? And can you get to a point where you're like happy and you're content and you feel like you've, you've, you've gotten somewhere? Yeah. I mean, that's success. It, it's not always even money. But yes, we're glad when our checkbooks can be filled and we need to, you know, figure out how to work through the, the profitable or the taxable income. That's success. Um, relationships. Who are the relationships that were created in the past year or ones that were just continued? So success has a lot of faces. Yeah. I would agree, I would agree and, with you. And, brought up, uh, you brought up a lot of good points. And uh, even for Paveville, our success, I mean, obviously, we've been extremely successful. Finance-wise, it's been a wonderful year. We've had, had good success there. But there's nothing like customers telling you that you know, your products have been life-changing. I, I used to hate what I did for a living. But thanks to the products and the systems you've developed, I now have life after, after work. And I now can enjoy myself. And I physically feel better at the end of the season. Absolutely. So to me, that's success. So it's, sure. it's interesting. I think we all have different uh, ideas of success, but I think painting yourself as a, as a business owner to kind of have a focus of success of what that looks like to you. And then what are the goals or what are the steps taken to hit that success? I think those are, those are good part of business planning too. Right. Um, there's a lot of different things. A lot of times there is, you know, what do you want out of, out of life? There is that importance. End goals. So, end goals. Perfect, right? And like, what, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Maybe that is. Go out big first. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Where do you see yourself in five years? How about a year from now? And, and what are the things that you can do? What are the things you can really do that will change it and make a difference? And, and, and sometimes I don't think you and I could have predicted 20 21 and 22. We couldn't have. I don't it know just, if anybody could have. Nobody In could. our industry, at least. In our industry. We, yeah. it, it just happened. But the point is, is during these good times, and we always talk about it here, how do you make sure you're watching? Because probably almost anybody can be successful, be successful in good times. But what about when it does get tightened up? Difficult. How do, are you still successful? And are you set properly in the industry to do so? Yeah. I think it's, um, if you read any kind of professionals that have written books, yeah, they always talk about goal setting. Absolutely. Goal setting is crucial because I, it gives you focus. It gives you vision. It gives you purpose. And uh, that is, that is a, that's an amazing thing. And if you can wrap your brain around that, and you know, we did those, those um Dream boards. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I think a dream board is is very effective, and yeah. uh, and having your your uh, dreams put out there, whether it be personal or or business goals, I think those are those are great things to do. Work is a means for us to have what we would like, right? It's not Absolutely. a matter of any other reason. You know, what drives us? Sure, some just like the success of it, but otherwise, it is. Hey, I would like to 
w what is it, right? We, we did it with our team, right? I, I would like to get a new car. I would like to buy a house. I would like to get a, get a boat. Um, I'd like to take my family on a vacation. That's why we work and that's what drives us. But if we don't have those things in front of us constantly, we lose focus. Yeah. So well, that was a good, that was a so good point. So write those down and tape them to your mirror, right? So every in your lit in your bathroom. So every morning when you get up, you read. You got purpose, right? There. You read your goals of why you're getting <laughs> up and going to work. You it's, mentioned it's about uh, preparing for hard times. Yeah. So I'm going to take a little trip down memory lane. Do you remember one particular hard time in our life in business? <laughs> a year. Or so? Two years. Two years. 08 and 09. 08 and 09. That's, uh, that's kind of what I was thinking of. Yeah. And, and preparing for those times when it was extremely difficult. I mean, those, were, those were difficult times. They were. Stressful beyond stressful. Um, I think we cut our pay in half those yeah. years. We took a half. We cut our pay directly in half. Yeah. Our, 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 our staff, staff took a cut Our staff pay. agreed to a 10% cut in pay. Remember that? We asked them, would you rather get laid off? Would you rather have a cut in pay? And uh, thankfully, our whole staff stuck with us. They said, no, we're, we're behind you. We're with you. Yep. And again, that goes back to treating your help like you want to be treated. And I think we had a tremendous love for our, for our employees, and it reflected in those times because they stuck with us. And they said, no, it does. We're gonna ta we'll take a little bit of hit with you, and we're going to get through this. Right. And uh, as difficult as it was, we came out shining. Yeah. You know, it really was amazing. Right. And it does go back to saying, hey, we're having a great year. Everyone hears of, you know, fill the rainy day fund. It's okay to pay some taxes. Pay some taxes and save that money for the rainy day. Make sure that you're not overextending yourself so that when the times get tough, you can't make your payments. Um, it's a tough spot to be. It, so There's it's, a rule it's of thumb always, as far as for like equipment and truck payments. You know what that is? I kind of forget what it was. Percentage, percentage yeah. There's a percentage of your gross sales. I can't remember what it is, but you can ask your accountant. You know, right, you, right. Any of you out there that have interest in that, it would be a good question to ask your accountant. Say, is there a rule of thumb number for as far as payments? I know we've kept it way under that because we've always been conservative in our buying. We have And been. I think it is, uh, it's, it's, it's crucial. You don't overextend in a good time. So if hard times come all of a sudden, I remember we had a particular contractor around here, and I'm not going to say names, but there was, there was that one contractor, and he came up. I think he got some money from his father, or he had, and he bought every, and everybody was drooling over that guy. His equipment, he had the greatest of everything, but two or three years, and little hard times came, and just totally dissipated. In fact, we ended up buying some of his equipment. We benefited from his mistake, which um, is unfortunate, but. It was a good example and a good lesson to us. When you start getting in good times, don't just spend that money foolishly and try to look like King Ping out there because it can come back to bite you. Right. The other huge advantage we have today compared to years ago is the whole marketing side of things. I mean, today marketing is social media and all the different platforms, as you mentioned, that you're on, that we're on, websites, and, and people go there. Um, I, I can't say if Maybe there's a handful. You know, name the last time you listened to a radio ad, radio and you hear a, a, a landscaper ad or TV. Uh, I don't know where you go. M maybe there are. Maybe a handful of you that would say HGTV would be a good place to advertise because they're talking our industry. Right. But, you know, for the most part, our, our, our networking then is the next section of it, right, as far as the marketing goes because referrals, Old customers coming back. Don't forget, we do projects for people. They have other projects, and they have friends. And it's it's just a great, it's a snowball effect you want to keep creating, yeah. where, where you're building upon those people that um, are thrilled. As you mentioned, right? Some of your clients are going like, I love my industry again. We got clients telling us, it's my favorite room in the house. I mean, outside the house, right? <laughs> they wish they could spend more time out there. We had a couple that did a, uh, a uh, propane or a gas fire pit, and they had three little children, and, and they said, it just was our life all summer long. We'd go out, click that fire pit on, spend an hour, hour and a half with our children, unplugged, 
big term these days. Yeah. Right. Get away from things. Come alive outside. They would come alive outside. That's another one. Great plug. Look that up. That's a wonderful, wonderful um, effort being put forth, growing our industry, making outdoor living far more um, attractive or pointing it out even. But that couple, they would sit there for an hour, hour and a half with their kids, look up at the stars or just chat, or maybe they'd read books to them. They were young children. They could shut the fireplace off, go back inside, and, and they said it, it was just such a connection uh, for the family. One little example, but uh, so many people have it their gathering places. Yeah. And that's our end of it as, as clients. But we can get these projects in better shape quicker and again, I'm gonna, yes, I'm plugging Paver Tool, absolutely. We, we know it's tools that are really gonna help. The other thing I'd like to just say off, off the cuff here is there's, when you say how uh, tools, how important are tools? Tools are very important, and I wanted to bring this up. I had jotted down a note on this, Phil. And really, there's, there's two things that, that um, maybe are the pushback or make selling the tools or deciding whether to buy tools difficult. The two things are is training. We've all been in the same boat. We got a guy, he fogs up the front window. Put him in a truck and send him to work, right? We need help. We don't take time to train. It's a huge thing. If you're looking at year-end planning, one thing I'd add, bring your guys in two, three weeks early and train them in the early spring. Yeah. Train them how Baylor to use Buzz the tools. has always done a really good job with that. We had right. those training days, we would mock stuff up and build Absolutely. stuff out here in the yard and Absolutely. get them in there and get guys physically running saws and Absolutely. laying stuff out and marking stuff and carrying stuff. And right. And the second is, there is a mentality in our business. I've always done it this way. It's quicker, it's faster. It might be like we mentioned earlier. It might be for the first three or four hours, but then they're dead. But there's so much of that, we call it in the everything, you know, teach an old dog new tricks. But if you can get them there, everyone wins. Yeah. Everybody wins. The one thing that we've, uh, we've tried to teach contractors over the years, say they buy a whole host of our tools. I'll right. tell them, don't take them all out at once. No. Take one out, give them a little bit of direction on it, give it to them. And if they start being, if they put up their, you know, and really don't guard, want it, yeah. they put up their guard and don't want any part of it, so you know what, just plead with them. Use this for an hour, then put it away. Next day, try it for another hour, then put it away. Pretty soon, it's interesting how that hour can sometimes become one hour, two hours, three Absolutely. hours. Next thing you know, the old ways dissipate. So it's kind of interesting like that. There's little tricks and tips, and none of us like change. Right. And uh, the tools do. Some of them require a lot of, lot of change on, uh, on the installer's part. So you do it just a little bit at a time and slowly graduate into that or graduate. Yeah. Because you even take, I think we go back to probably the main tool that we, I shouldn't say that, there, there was those eight or so tools that were your, really were the beginning, but one of them were the, the lifters. I have to always think of the lifters about, um, you know, are you going to go over there and, and grab that stack and carry it and, you know, rip your shirt and tear up your hands and, does it still happen? I'm gonna be honest with you. It still happens here at Baylor Brothers. It's so difficult to treat some of these guys, are just, they grab them quick. The other thing that happens is with the lifters is palletizing. Some products are, aren't palletized to be efficient with those, but even taking your time and just loading your lifters with the material and then still carrying, you're still gonna yeah. last all day. We got a video on that, actually, yeah. we did it. We did a distance, and me and one of our guys did that. And uh, still with the lifters, even hand stacking them, because you still, if they're on, if there's layers between right. or mesh between the layers, you still got to hand stack it to carry it physically. So we are doing the same thing, and I actually carried 30% more. Yeah. And I was actually really casually hauling, and the other guy was pretty, he was getting after pretty it. Pretty aggressive, yeah. So it's, it's interesting, but it's a mentality. You really got to wrap your brain around it. And the point saying, is, oh, you I'm went out to dinner it. that night and didn't fall asleep in, at the table, <laughs> and he fell asleep before yeah. he even got exactly. out to dinner, right? So it's that whole, again, it. living. It's, it. a, it's a whole type of uh, better, better living. Yeah, better quality of life. Better quality of life. So... I'd have to say one of the uh, unique things, we talked about building these outdoors and talked about the family with the, with the kids outdoors and just enjoying it. And I, I've always marveled in our industry that when contractors, and you have 
right? You got contractors or, or uh, clients, I should say, writing you out checks for 100, 200, even 300,000. And to see them still smiling when they're writing that check, yeah. to me is just amazing because you put a roof on your house and you're about putting your ink through the check. Cause Absolutely. You're like, oh, spending 20, 30 grand, something I'll never enjoy. But these people spend, well, you know, now they're gonna think about it for a year. Your customers that you just signed on today, oh, nearly a year, they're gonna be thinking about this project. And they're flipping through books and catalogs yep. and they're online and they're looking up all different kinds of channels, hows and those different channels that are out there. You can see these unbelievable outdoor living spaces and they're yeah. dreaming and dreaming about this. Yeah, We so, sell enjoyment. Yeah, We sell enjoyment we sell and enjoyment people don't and mind better spending quality. money on enjoyment. Um, and that's, and that's a, a wonderful thing. But we, can always, we always gotta go back. It is a hard business. It's not called hardscape for no reason. I know they're talking about the product, but really it's hard on our bodies. And the more you can help your help <laughs> save their bodies, um, help your people, help your team save their bodies, you're doing them a favor. Yeah. And let alone, try not to get work comp claims. Oh, that's another whole thing. We, we could have another whole conversation just on injuries and what it costs us yeah. as a company. It's a minimum of probably 10, 20 grand. Oh, well, it's, it depends on your payroll, but my point is is those are huge, and we did. We've had accidents here that our mods were big, and we got big worker comp, and, and you're, you, you, know, you pay 30% more. That's what 1.3, you know, you're paying 30% more on your workers' comp because your guys got injured now, some injuries are gonna be just accidents, but if there are injuries that could have been prevented, been avoided, yep. that's what you wanna focus on. And that's, and, that's, and that's why you're exploding. Part of it, I think, and it is, we've talked about it too, right? It's a lot of these uh, newer companies that are starting out in the industry going, how do we get this done? Or younger people who are going like, I like working hard a little bit, but I don't, I'm not really gonna work this hard forever. We didn't even have that thought process, right? We were just gonna work hard no matter what. But, so, so yes, working hard, not smart, your, your slogan is, um, is beneficial. And if all of us as contractors, the, the ones that are doing the work can, can get that passed down, you gotta pass that down and you gotta repeat it and repeat it over and over to your team. We want you working smarter, not harder. We're investing in things so that you don't have to work so hard. You have to learn to use them, but once you learn them, you're gonna love them. So, and it's a process. And I, and I think another part you can think about, everybody thought of landscaping as, oh, it's a stepping stone. Young kids get out of school, I'm just gonna landscape for a few years. It doesn't have to be that way. This can be a career. Absolutely. The staff that you're surrounded with just around in the showroom, it's amazing. These people are making tremendous living. Absolutely. Um, beautiful living. Yeah. They're making a lot of money at it, and I don't think it, it should no longer be just a pass-through business anymore. This is a career. And if you give, like you said, you talked about it, giving cont or the uh, employees your right tools, the right systems, they can have success in this industry, and they can make a beautiful living. Right. Well, thanks again, Tom. My pleasure. We'll be doing this again. Yeah, so we had a lot, lot of fun with this. And <laughs> this is awesome. Going down memory lane. Yeah, it's always fun to do stuff.